Fallout 4 tends to get a bad rap among longtime Fallout fans and the gaming community in general. The story fizzles off toward the end and is full of plot holes, the gunplay is great by Bethesda Fallout standards, but still not the best for an FPS, and some gameplay mechanics break lore that's been in place since Fallout 1. But there is one mechanic that is loved by many and is the main reason why I have more hours logged in F4 than I do with my previous employer, and that is settlement building. Even today, new players are jumping into the world of F4 and discovering the possibilities of settlement builds, but it might not be readily apparent how to best utilize the workshop. That's why today I'm going to show you some tips to help create unique and realistic looking settlements in Fallout 4 without the need for mods, console commands, or exploits, though no judgment if you choose to use them. So grab a can of cram, crack open an ice cold sunset sarsaparilla, and relax as we show you 5 tips for building awesome settlements in Fallout out for. This tip might seem strange at first, but let's take a look at one of the most fundamental features of the workshop in F4. Settlements have a set limit for how much can be constructed at any location. This is indicated by a build meter in the corner of your hut. When you reach a settlement, there is usually a large amount of junk laying around that prevents you from being able to build much. By using the workshop to scrap this junk, you're freeing up real estate to build on, but you're also lowering the build meter, allowing more items to be constructed at the location. Settlement building benefits from an interesting little quirk in this mechanic. It doesn't distinguish between items that are natively located in the settlement and objects that were delivered to that settlement. If your build meter is full, simply dump a bunch of items from your inventory onto the ground, scrap using the workshop, and voila! you can continue building larger and larger settlements. The workshop registers that something was removed from the settlement, so therefore it must allow you to build something to replace it. In my experience, heavily modded weapons seem to provide the greatest reduction to the build meter for the lowest weight consequence in your inventory. Be careful not to go overboard, as large settlements can result in game instability and poor frame rate due to the large number of objects that must be rendered. When you enter workshop mode, you will see a green translucent fence surrounding your settlement. This represents the boundaries of the buildable area. However, one thing a lot of players don't learn until it's too late is that this barrier is actually three-dimensional, and even though there's no indicator for the build ceiling, it does exist and will prevent you from being able to construct buildings above a certain height. This varies greatly from location to location, with the tallest structure we've attempted being over 20 stories in height, but being limited to only four or five stories in other locations. Playing around with a few sets of stairs and floors can help you get an idea of the build ceiling in a settlement before you start building in earnest. This can prevent you from starting a large structure only to find out halfway through that you can't actually complete it because you have exceeded the build ceiling. There's no denying that Fallout 4 is one of the most realistic environments that Bethesda has ever created, with trees, rocks, brush, piles of debris, and grass everywhere to make the world look authentic and alive, despite being a window into a post-nuclear apocalyptic world. The problem for us post-apocalyptic architects is that these objects often tend to override objects constructed in the workshop, which can result in sections of flooring disappearing underneath piles of trash, walls disappearing into boulders, bushes popping out of storefronts. The point I'm trying to make is it doesn't look quite right. The good news is, there's a way to get around this. Get off the ground. There are a couple ways this can be accomplished. The first is by using a foundational floor piece, which is a solid cuboid structure designed for just such a task that allows you to raise a structure high enough that grasses are no longer visible. Another option is to build stilted structures or buildings with unfinished ground level basements. This results in clean, pristine indoor spaces that don't look like they've been abandoned for centuries despite people living inside them. One of the features of the F4 workshop that makes it so much more practical and fun than other build modes within non-sim games is its ability to snap objects together. This takes a lot of the guesswork out of placing walls, floors, and roofs just right so that there aren't air gaps or misalignments. However, the snapping feature isn't completely perfect. Not all objects like to snap to other objects the way you want them to, and it can sometimes be a chore to navigate corners. Most snappable objects try to continue in a single direction, especially walls. An easy way around this is so simple it doesn't really occur to most players at first. 
One possible, build your floors first. This allows you to snap your walls to the floors, which can make navigating those corners that much simpler. Even if you're not bothering with floors, for instance, if you're building a wall around a settlement, adding a temporary floor piece to the location you plan to make a corner will make navigating that 90 a breeze. There's an old military adage that no plan survives contact with the enemy. It's easy to envision your new settlement in your head, but after you start building, the realities of the build location can force you to downsize, scale back, or completely change what you had originally intended. Whether it's an unscrappable object preventing you from creating one more row of floors, unexpectedly hitting a build ceiling, or discovering that you don't have room for that industrial water purifier, these incidents can hit hard if you've already exceeded a settlement population that you'll be able to support. This might force you to plant crops and walk Ways, slam water pumps in blind corners, and throw sleeping bags in hallways to keep your settlers healthy and happy in a now cramped, haphazard, and disorganized location. That's why it might be a good idea to finish your settlement before turning on that radio recruitment beacon. Completing your settlement before populating can allow you to plan out the maximum healthy population and prevent the need for functional compromises that negatively impact your aesthetic vision. So there you have it, those were five tips, tricks, and life hacks to help you build awesome settlements in Fallout 4. Special shout out to our subscribers, and if you're new here, please consider dropping a like, subscribing, and leaving your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear your ideas for future settlement locations you would like showcased on this channel, how to make our builds better, or ideas for future segments. All right, challenge time. If we can get to a thousand subs on this channel, I will make my first attempt at a live stream, complete with a face reveal for my ugly mug. I haven't yet decided what I'll be doing on said live stream, but I'm thinking a tier maker list, either ranking Fallout 4 companions or settlement build locations. But if you have ideas for what you would like to see during that live stream, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Real, stay safe, and I'll see you all here next time on Grey Gaming.